Today I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit different from the other challenges we've done. This is going to be about how you can build a precision pell um, with just some very simple things that you have around the house. All you're going to need is going to be a tennis ball or something similar that's going to have a little bit of heft to it, but uh, not too much. Um, you'll also need some kind of ring. I've got a couple things here. Um, and you're going to want to size this based off of your familiarity with a sword. Um, so if you're pro, go with something tiny, maybe go with something a little larger. And um, if you're very new at this, uh, you're going to want to use a piece of cardboard, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And then the last thing you're going to need is a length of string or a line of some kind. I've just got some twine laying around. Um, you probably want about 15 feet um, to 20 feet for this. Leave it on the line if you have a big spool like this. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to very carefully take this knife and just put a little bit of pressure and start trying to make a hole there. Cool. So I got a hole on that side. And then um, that's actually all I need to start with a drill. So <laughs> my cat's very unhappy. I'm not paying attention to him. So usually what you would never want to do with a drill is drill like this. But because this is such a soft material, it's not going to grab, it's not going to cut my hand. I'm just going to be very carefully and just bore a little hole. I'm not pressing hard. You see, I'm not deforming it, but I'm just going to take that hole that I started and I'm going to round it out a little bit. And then I'm going to push this through and I'm going to change the grip on the tennis ball so I don't drill into my own hand. And I'm going to drill through the other side. So at this point, it might require a little bit of creativity to get this through there. If you have a piece of wire, like a coat hanger would work really well. Um, I have a very thin piece of wire that you probably won't have, but picture this as a coat hanger. I've bent a little loop in the end of it. And I'm going to use that to pull the um, twine through. Another thing you could do is you could uh, tape your twine to your wire. So I've got this tape done here, um, and I'm just going to thread it through. You could use something like a paintbrush, I tape it on that. Um, you could also tape it to your original drill bit. Uh, that drill bit's Brit. <laughs> That drill bit is just a little bit stubby, so I didn't use that. Um, and I just poked until I could kind of feel it, basically. Like, even though it's not coming through, I can sort of tell on the tennis ball where it's at by putting my finger on the hole, and then I pull it through and magically we've threaded a tennis ball. So at this point, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna choose your ring size. And um, I've been doing this a couple of years. Uh, for video demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use this larger ring. Um, I might experiment later and put this ring on here, but this is gonna show up on video way better uh, outside. So I'm gonna do that for now. Um, but if you wanna challenge yourself, use this. This is just like a key ring ring. Um, and this is just a cheap carabiner. So all we're gonna do is we're going to take whatever we've decided as our ring and we are going to tie a knot here, and I am just tying two granny knots. So as you'll see in a minute, that method wasn't terribly strong. Give it a try. What I'm actually going to say you should do for tying, tying the ring on at the bottom is to loop it through once, loop it through again, and then finally tie your knot in there. It's got strain relief in there and it's not going to pull directly on your knot. It's gonna be very strong. There we go. That is the super easy to make precision pell and um, I'll show you how to make a ring for a beginner you're gonna to wanna to take a piece of cardboard. I'm not sure how long this is, maybe about 16 inches. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna take it in both hands and I'm going to start running it across the edge of the table. And this is going to soften it up, loosen it up, let us, um, you know, have enough pliability in here that we get a ring and not too much of a lumpy 
octagon. If you want to make a fancier one, you could get something like a teething ring, maybe, for babies, um, and put that on there. That'd be fairly large. But see, we're going to be able to make a pretty big ring that uh, anybody could conceivably thrust through. And so uh, size this accordingly. Uh, but also challenge yourself. It's going to be a little hard. Um, somebody that's been doing this a while still probably wouldn't be able to land a thrust through this every time, this little key ring. So, you know, challenge yourself when you make this. Um, but once you've sized it how you want it, cut it off here. Um, and then you are going to want to poke a hole through this, which uh, if you shouldn't be using a knife, ask your parents to. Um, but I'm just gonna poke one little hole there. And I'm going to use that as reference to poke another hole there. Be careful where your fingers are. And if I hadn't already threaded this onto my tennis ball, that's where I'd thread that through. Cool, um, let's take this outside and use it. First thing you're gonna do is you're just going to start with cuts. You're gonna hit it, wait for it to come back to you, wait for it to feel comfortable, and even if it's still moving, you can still try hitting it. Here, another thing I can do is that I can practice thrusting. So if I'm in third, um, or if I've, I'm up in Vontag or Flug, um, I'm going to look at where I want to thrust to, I'm going to set the point, and I'm going to thrust. This is gonna be very tricky. I'm gonna thrust like that. Um, and so as time goes by, we're going to get a little bit better at this. There I was able to do it while it was moving and a little bit more dynamically. Um, but you're going to notice when you do that, it's going to upset it a little bit. That's going to move. So do maybe four or five reps of advanced retreat, advanced thrust, misc, um, and only count the reps where you make it. That one was hopeless because it was turned away from me. Um, feel free to study it if you want to, but it's always going to have a little bit of motion and especially at first it's going to be hard. At first what you can do to practice this, you're not going to get it all, is just start and flug, um, which is super easy to thrust from. Set your, so set your point and thrust. I tried to do that very slowly and I couldn't even do it. I should be using that cardboard ring. Um, thrust. <laughs> um, yeah, so. So do five reps of thrusts that you land. Another thing you can do is um, practice zverks with this. So if I work one way, I want to really want to be aiming for the tennis ball. Um, and then while still moving, circuit again. Um, and it's going to be a very good indicator of if you're landing your hit where you want to be or not. Uh, for instance, there I got tangled up in it. So let's see, uh, another thing that you can do with this is that you can use this as a footwork trainer. So bear in mind, this is like the worst place to do footwork ever. There's roots, there's an incline, there's all kinds of stuff. So if I take this and I send it off to the left, I let it swing, I kind of observe its rhythm. I want to advance and retreat and do it. Um, and so I can do this with a passing step, passing step, do passing step, Simple step, simple step, simple step, simple step, go past it. So in addition to doing that uh, with just the footwork, you can also do that with the sword. So if I cut the start of the sequence, back to Vomtog, advance, 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 retreat, advance, advance. Yeah, so it's, there's a lot of places you can go with it. Um, the thrust thing alone is gonna be pretty difficult at first. Uh, if you do this in a park, try to find somewhere flat that's a big part of why I've had so much difficulty with it is that there is a significant incline here and there's roots and stuff. But yeah, um, have fun. It's a pellet that's very easy to store um, and you can make it for effectively nothing. Yeah, thanks. Give it a try. Did you catch that? <laughs>